different material this time uh, for this cooker. And uh, I printed out the instructions, but you'll see I printed them on the back of old paper here. Carrie's old flute music, actually, from when she played flute in high school. Here on the back, we've got the instructions. So we're going to use a different material, though. I'm going to explain what that is, so we'll go grab that now. Okay. So as I mentioned, I've got my instructions. Um, and I've got a tape measure, which is going to be very helpful for me. I've got a razor blade knife. And then I've got a little tool for marking on the material that I'm going to use. Now you could use a pencil as well, but the reason I'm using this little tiny screwdriver, little flathead screwdriver, is because of the material that we're actually using. This stuff. Now what is this stuff? Well, Carrie used to work at a printing company. And I imagine if you went to any big printing company in your town, you could probably get these old sheets. They actually use these for printing paper. But when they're done with them, a lot of times they just get thrown out. And a lot of times they get messed up in the process. There will be some that will just be messed up. Well, Carrie used these on our kitchen cabinets. When we first moved in, we wanted a different look on our kitchen cabinet. So she had this great idea that we could take these that they were just going to throw out anyway and uh, we could use them on the kitchen cabinet. So we're going to use these actually to create our solar cooker and you'll see how we're going to do that but basically you could probably get these from any printing company in your local area for free if not at a very very small cost. The other thing we have is a cutting surface so that uh, you can actually and there's just some old stuff that we actually tore out of the kitchen. One small challenge I'm noticing is that these plans call for a piece of cardboard that you would actually line with foil, but they call for a piece of cardboard that is 48 inches by 36 inches. My panels here are not 48 inches by 36 inches. They do have one side which is 35 inches, so we're going to use that as the long side. So we're going to have to take two of them and put them together and use that to make our cooker. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that I'm putting smudges all over this plating, which is ultimately going to make it not work as well. So I'm actually going to flip it over so that I can work on the other side so that I don't smudge the reflective surface up before actually putting it out. We'll probably have to clean it anyway. Uh, if I don't need to smudge it, then there's no reason for me to. So I'm going to flip it over and, and start measuring on that side. And you can see on this side of the metal, my marks actually show up much better. So if you can see that in the camera, you'll see that I can actually cut now with these marks that are actually showing up there. So I think we're ready to start cutting. Now here's the crazy thing. You don't even have to be that good at this stuff. I just totally screwed this thing up. I'm going to do it anyway and uh, see if we can't fix it. We'll see what happens in the end. So these are my neighbors, Jeff and Dallas. So as I said, you can see I kind of screwed this one up just a little bit because I've got all these cutting lines along here. I don't know if you can see those. I'll hold these up to the camera so you can see. You know, I made several cuts along here and kind of messed up the front of the surface here. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but where I cut in the wrong place is going to be kind of a, another reflective surface, which isn't really the best for what you want here. So what this is going to do, actually, and hopefully I'm not blinding it too much, but this is going to become our pattern for all of the ones maybe that I'll make in the future. Maybe after I'll get it done, my neighbors will think it's cool and they'll want one too. But once you get this cut into the pattern that's right, <laughs> you can basically just take and peel it on the cuts that you made. So this is a piece you can hold on for later use. And again, not the best cutting job. Be careful, by the way, because these edges will become very, very sharp once you cut them. So you'll want to be careful, otherwise you might cut yourself. Now honestly, if I wasn't making this for a video, I'd probably say, well, that's a good enough surface. But because I'm making it for a video, this is going to become my pattern for the next one that I'm going to make. that I created, pulled along the cuts that I made. And again, being careful because you can cut yourself very easily doing this. And here we have the bottom of our solar cooker. 
now it's time to make the top. But as you can see, it's getting pretty cloudy. <laughs> looking a little green around here. We do get tornadoes in the summer in Colorado. So we are going to head All in. Alright, so now you're getting the inside view of the garage. Maybe not completely safe in here if it's uh, bad weather outside, but we are going to flip this over. And now I'm going to do the measurements again. And hopefully this time I'll get them right the first time. And I'm realizing as I do this now that this isn't going to work with just one panel. For the back, I'm going to have to make three different panels because these pieces here aren't big enough to do what I need to do. So I am going to have to make three different pieces and then figure out some way of putting them together. So I'm going to go ahead and tear these out now and we're going to try and put together at least the back panel portion of our solar cooker. So here's what we have. There's going to be those three pieces and what's going to happen is the center piece is going to sit inside of the other two and it's going to get its reflection from this lower panel. Now I need to go ahead and score this lower panel so that I can fold it. You can see that I've already done that here and uh, I'm kind of getting the rest of my panels dirty so I'm going to have to clean this before I actually put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this. Now I'm going to need to cut some slots in this at some point so that it will hold these little side wings. Ultimately this is going to be a lot easier for you if you just cut out of one piece of cardboard. Um, we're going to go ahead and fold this piece here and then figure out where we need to make the holes for it to insert it into. Now they do show here on the diagram where you're supposed to put the holes. In theory, I should be using a protractor for this. Um, you know, those little things that you used in high school and didn't think had any real practical purpose. That would be me. Yeah, should be using a protractor, but I'm not. I'm just eyeballing it. It's probably not the way to do this. So one more thing you should use in this project, a protractor. We've got our whole thing all cut now. And basically all we need to do is go ahead and fold this, and we're going to go ahead and put the whole thing together. I wish I could tell you this project was easy and straightforward and simple and you could just do it. And, uh, but I'm in this project about four hours at this point and I'm going to use duct tape. I'm not exactly sure what else to do to get the thing to hold together and still use the materials that I have at home. I have duct tape and I may as well use it because I already bought it. If anybody has any issue with that, sorry, but I'm going to use duct tape. For all you that saw that I didn't use a protractor and could have, sorry. Thank you for watching anyway. So here's what I did. I actually had to cut these slots a little higher up. These here are probably um, not good for making this really solar friendly thing, but there's only one of them, so that's okay. We'll put the pot and the wire stand inside of a plastic cooking bag. That's what we'll use when we actually use this solar cooker for cooking our food. So again, I wish I could tell you it was easy, um, but it wasn't. It took some time, and I think I kind of screwed up in the process, but it works. And we'll find out if it actually works, if it actually does what it's supposed to do when we do a cooking test with it. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and make sure you go and watch the results of what happens when we actually use this to cook.